you can't pay the cost of your loan <laughs> and your house is falling into foreclosure, how can you pay the interest and the foreclosure costs? I know. It just, well, that's where Neil says it. The, the payments at the end of the process are just as high it makes as no they were sense. in the beginning. So yeah. why is the system structured that way? Well, you're getting a loan from a bank, and the bank is structuring it to their benefit. Well, it doesn't seem to me it's in the interest of the bank to have all of these foreclosed houses being lying empty no, and losing isn't. value. Yeah, it's what, what the banks call unearning assets. When yeah, so, out there. so I right. mean, how can that be? It's not in the interest of the homeowner, and it doesn't seem to be in the interest of the bank. It's, it's a very good question. Uh, it's one of the things we go round and round on all the time. If I have a client, which is not uncommon, who has a loan, four or five hundred thousand dollar loan on a house, say in East Palo Alto, on a house that was worth five or six hundred thousand a couple of years ago, and is now is worth two, two fifty. Uh, if the bank forecloses on it, they immediately lose two or three hundred thousand dollars. So why would you do that? And I don't have an answer for that. But one of the problems is that uh, there are so many parties to this. You're dealing with, let's say, Bank of America. He's, he's who you're making your payments to. Well, Bank of America is the servicer. They probably don't own the loan. They're m merely taking the monthly payments and sending you the bill and sending the money off to the investor, the owner of that loan. Who's the owner? Now, that loan is probably bundled in with 500,000 other loans and making a $100 million bundle that's owned by who knows who, a pension maybe, fund. Maybe Fannie Mae, maybe Freddie Mac, or... Pension fund, yeah. Yeah. Calpers, pension fund, insurance yeah. company, <laughs> sure. And maybe that insurance company or pension fund only owns a piece of it. Maybe they own 10% and somebody else owns 10%. So the communication back and forth is really very difficult. Well, it, it, I think it's just a terrible reflection on what the system, the banks, mm -hmm. and everybody involved in the industry that things have fallen into such a mess. Yeah. Who's profiting? Who's profiting? Well, slowly the banks are. It looks, it appears, you know. They just it, got bailed out. They just got bailed out. <laughs> but, but, you, if, but I know that uh, I'm, I'm told by uh, many prognosticators that bank stocks are, are a great buy right now. Oh, I am sure. Because they were driven so far down, they have a long way to come up. Um, you think of a Citibank that was selling at $54 a share is, I think it's $4.5 a share right now. So, you know, it was at one time the largest financial services organization in the world, which it's not any longer, but it has a long way to grow at this point. So, you know, the uh, stock pickers are saying those are good selections right now. So certainly banks are probably profiting from this. Um, a lot of the, uh, there's a lot of, uh, what I want to say is uh, foreclosure uh, ah, organizations out there. Pe yes. Companies that, that uh, are really more or less facades for lawyers, for attorneys who sure. are out to, they, they purport to help people with their foreclosures and help them get out of their, their problems, but they charge them a lot of money. This is something I come across a lot with credit as well, because uh, people who are in foreclosure typically also have a number of credit issues. So they turn to credit counseling agencies, and there's foreclosure counsel counseling agencies that are not like, like Neil with EPA Can Do. They are a HUD certified foreclosure counselor, okay? So they're certified by the Housing and Urban Development Department of the United States government. So they're, you know, on the up and up. There's a number of organizations out there that are supposedly helping people with their through their foreclosures, but they're not on the up and up. And I would think there are those organizations too, and we hear a lot of advertisements where it's said, if, if you're in debt and your credit is, you're in debt to like $10,000, call mm -hmm. us and we'll enable right. you to right. for, get for your payments down. For $1,500, we'll help you. <laughs> yes, that's, that's and, basically and people get even worse. So. Mm -hmm. How is someone to know who's on the up and up? And, and let's talk about what consumers can do. There are a lot of scammers out there. There are also a lot of organizations like ours, nonprofits, that uh, work under HUD or NeighborWorks or one of those organizations that do not charge people who come in uh, to talk to us about modifications. And there is a HUD, uh, you can go to HUD.gov and check out their website. There's a hotline and there's a list of organizations across the country there. What can one look out for? Well, I think you want to look out for upfront fees. Yeah. That, uh, you know, a very good counselor is going to spend time with you without charging you any money to find out what your situation is first. Okay, um, one that uh, I work with uh, 
with Merrill West and with a with number of other organizations, uh, is surepath.org. And surepath is formerly the credit counseling services for the county of Santa Clara. They now serve several counties on the coast. With SurePath, they will spend time and counsel you and find out what your situation is. And then if they decide that a bill consolidation is the best path for you, that's when you may have to pay, you may pay a fee or you may pay, you may pay fee, a fee for the loan or interest on a loan. And that's SurePath, S-U-R-E-P-A-T-H? Yes. Dot org. Dot org, right. Okay. And they're a nonprofit credit counseling agency. And that's another thing is to look for nonprofit organizations. If they're a for-profit organization, it's a... I'd say that's a question mark for me. A, 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 a for-profit credit counseling service is obviously looking to make money off of people. Generally, a lot of these credit counselors will, will request money up front, $500 up front, $1,000 up front. Sometimes it's a percentage of what, they're, what they owe overall. So let's say somebody owes fifteen or $20,000. They say, okay, uh, for 15%, mm. you will be able to work with your creditors reduce the dollar amounts that you owe, possibly reduce your interest rates on those, and reduce your payments. Um, you know, so it, it depends on what that is worth to you and how much debt you have. Well, uh, I have heard that these organizations aren't doing anything for the consumer that the consumer couldn't do for himself or it's herself. Absolutely true. 